we'll call this meeting of the Merrimack Conservation Commission for August 16th, 2021 to order. There's a green button. Um, pretty lean agenda tonight, public comments. We have none, let's see, who do we need to? Um, Ellen, would you uh, sit in as a voting member for Eric, please? There are no members of the public here for public comment. Uh, no public hearings, no appointments, uh, which brings us to statutory and advisory business. Uh, tonight we have TC Boston Development Incorporated, was, which is the applicant, and Reichel Company Incorporated is the owner. It's a review for acceptance and consideration of a site plan to construct a 323,750 square foot warehouse and distribution facility and associated site improvements. The parcel is located at 50 Robert Milligan Parkway in the I-1 Industrial and Aquifer Conservation Districts. Tax map is 2D, lot 078, case, pound sign, PB2021-32. Um, so you would. Fire it up. And Oh, still needs to table. Just, I have the mic and then I can mm -hmm. push it around. Yeah. If you would, just for the record, state your, uh, your name. Yes, sir. Uh, Austin Turner with Bowler here this evening representing the applicant. Uh, as was mentioned in kind of the, the opening summary what we're looking at doing this is the property we're talking about is the address is 50 robert milligan parkway so folks who are familiar that's kind of near the faa and the the camper place the little white cars or trailers on the lower left corner of the image that's the the rv place this site is kind of known as when you drive down heading southbound or northbound on fe everett you see the big the old ledge wall that's the site. It's the old lovely piece that they've been looking at as a gravel pit or have been working as a gravel pit for probably 20 plus years, I think, at this point, maybe maybe more than that. And they have a contract in place with our client to, to sell the property. And our client's obviously going to develop this particular site as a, about a 324,000 square foot warehouse slash distribution facility. We've maintain you can kind of see on the aerial there's an existing access driveway that comes into the property you can see that kind of little frontage arm that extends out to the, the cul-de-sac we're going to maintain that driveway and then reposition it as you it kind of takes that that right turn i guess as you're looking at this image and then come into the property the building is pretty apparent it's that light gray shaded area and then kind of immediately below the building if you will and proximate to the highway it's going to be kind of employee parking spaces and then in the rear of the facility opposite of the highway that's kind of the operational piece that's where the loading docks are so that whole stretch of building in the back that's the loading docks and then the parking spaces you see uh, above that that's where trailer storage would be for the facility being very aware that the property is located next to Bowers Pond you know being a water supply system and obviously under the Merrimack regulations is subject to the shoreland provisions under NHDES standards. So you, you've adopted those standards, as you, you all well know. Uh, in consideration of that, this property obviously has been operated as a gravel pit for decades. We arranged the improvements to kind of stay within the confines of the gravel pit. So we're not clearing any existing vegetation. We're not encroaching into the buffer zones further. The area that if you're looking at the right side of this image kind of where the extent of the pavement is that's essentially where that gravel operation has you know, ceased and maintaining all that veg our grading even has been limited to to respect those existing vegetative boundaries and that's kind of where it starts to drop off quite substantially and it gets into kind of there's a little floodplain that extends around that appendage you can kind of see right center of the screen there's a, a slight floodplain that extends around that we're not doing any work beyond kind of that existing vegetated boundary. And even with that cliff, if you look in the upper left corner of the property, that kind of vertical rock face cliff that, that's there, we're intending to leave that alone. It, we're gonna put the requisite fall zones in place working with the geotechnical engineering consultant. Not that there's 
rocks falling off that face, but you want to leave an appropriate boundary. It'll be fenced and have that perimeter. We designed the stormwater management system here is, is pretty robust, frankly, and it, it exceeds quite substantially the DES standards for that. Understanding that this project, this property is located in the aquifer overlay district, we're pretty cognizant of making sure we're doing the appropriate stormwater controls, including, and not the least of which is the infiltration. And this very large stack of paper here is the Durand report, which we've provided. The infiltration performance is kind of in the back of that, exceeded by some order of magnitude, you know, multiple times over. The property, as you can imagine, and it's quite apparent, when you look at the left side of the property, you have that big vertical rock face. They, they obviously encountered rock, no surprise, right? They took it out. That rock face drops off fairly quickly. And if you look, you know, I'm gonna call thereabouts the middle of the property, maybe the middle of the building, the rock face pitches off very, very quickly. And they've used that material and kind of filled the site in to create that large flat pad that you see out there today. Underneath that are some pretty pretty good soils. It's sandy, high permeability soils. Obviously, being in an aquifer district, that's what you'd expect. That was confirmed by the geotechnical evaluation. And then obviously the pond relies on that groundwater recharge. So what we have, it might be a little bit hard to see. Maybe I'll walk up there to show you real quick. And I'll come back to the mic so I'm not off record. But just quickly, the stormwater basin here, which I'll describe on the mic. I can get that one too, right? Is that one? Speak loud. Speak loudly. Yeah. Uh, I've been told I speak too loud sometimes. So <laughs> this right here, that's going to be what we're, we're, we're proposing it to be right now. It's a sand filter basin. The reason being, we're getting pretty close to existing grade with our grading in there. We suspect we have some legend there, which we're doing some confirmatory pits out there on Thursday of this week. We think we have legend there, so we're not expecting a substantial amount of recharge. This part of the watershed drains this way and gets ultimately collected in a drainage network out here. So it's not directly tributary to Bowers Pond. What we're doing in there is we have a surface basin. It looks and feels on the, you know above grade. It's going to look like your customary detention infiltration system. Underneath that is about 30 inches of sand. The stormwater goes in there and slowly filters through the sand. It's under drain, and then we convey it to its ultimate place. It kind of feeds through this wooded area, comes back around, and then gets into the existing collection system. That collection system takes the water, and there's kind of like a wetland almost like a drainage feature over here that's kind of on feral and kind of goes in that way. So we're filtering it through there. If we get out there and, and are surprised and don't find shallow ledge, we'll probably convert that over to a detention and infiltration basin. We have a stormwater basin right here. That's kind of that flat terraced area that oddly has historically used as some of their gravel pit operation. That's going to be your customary infiltration basin. There's a large basin up here in that flat part of the surface to kind of see that shape. Outside that shoreline buffer, that's the primary workhorse of our stormwater management. And then underneath these parking areas, we have an underground system as well. That's to take some of the supplemental volume from the roof, portions of the loading, and then those are distributed between those, those two basins. So there's really four stormwater management systems in here. The bulk of them are located on the far right side of the property. That's where we have our best soils, that's where the ledge is the, the deepest, and that's where that groundwater recharge is most proximate to the pond and the aquifer. The sand filter basin is really, it's an interesting thing. So we've been talking to DES about this. I had my pre-consultation with the Alteration of Terrain Bureau working. I want to get their feedback on it. Obviously, it's a, it's a large project. It's, it's got considerations with Bower Pond, with aquifer overlays. I wanted to make sure we had them on board very, very early. This property has been in active use for so long. It may have even preceded the site specific and what is now the Alteration of Terrain Program at DES. They have no record of this property having had those approvals and they think it may have predated it as a result. So what they've asked us to do and what our model suggests, even though this property has been, has been operating like this for decades, they asked us to model the existing conditions as though it was a wooded area undeveloped. So we did. So we're modeling the existing condition. Obviously our stormwater system is going to be substantially oversized as a result of that, which we're fine with. But as DES would have it, because it never received, or they don't have a record of it having received a historical approval for the work that <clears throat> predated the program, we have to go back to the existing condition before the site was like that. So we assumed it to be a wooded condition. The trade is this driveway has been here forever, and it's in this very narrow sliver of property, kind of this frontage arm, if you will, right? 
that's the one spot as you if you dig into the mechanics of the drainage, you'll see we have a slight very nominal increase in the post development rate of runoff this driveway right about here is the high point and it drains back down there's really no feasible way to put any kind of stormwater management in this very sliver so what we did we put in a vegetated swale along the perimeter and inside that vegetation line so the grading there we mimicked all the grading we're going to resurface this roadway not change the grade but resurface it and we re-pitched how the road wants to be elevated so it sheds off into a vegetated treatment swale. It comes down, gets collected before it gets conveyed into that existing drainage network. Today, it just sheets off and goes into the road. So what we're trying to do is capture and get some additional treatment out of that, that one stretch of road. And here, I have a little bit more flexibility. So I incorporated that sand filter basin to get some additional treatment, even though we're essentially realigning this roadway. This sand filter is taking this part and some of the underdrain slope that comes out of that rock face goes in there, filters through the sand, and then gets distributed. So fairly robust, and I, I didn't intentionally gloss over it. I can get into all the mechanics of it and the, the granular stuff. Just as big picture context, our stormwater, our baseline for this is a pre-developed, untouched property. So you see large stormwater management systems, it's because we oversized them at DES's request, and it really when you look at the infiltration comparison, I think we were targeting 8,000 cubic feet of infiltration or something. And I think we're over, we're about 194,000 cubic feet of infiltration storage volume based on all this basin. So it's substantially, substantially higher. What we've done with grading in here is try, this is more or less in kind of an oversimplification. It's a big flat pad. And these are all the work I had. There's material stockpiles, which a portion of which we're anticipating actually using for the structural material, fill material out here because it's processed gravel. It might seem some additional processing, but there's various levels of processing. It's all great stuff. So the intent is that we're gonna be using it to complete some of the earthwork operations and you're either under the building, under parking lots or whatever it's appropriate for. Um, and we've set the elevations up like that. So we have some cuts in certain areas and some fills, but generally speaking, we're expecting it to be an on-site balanced earthwork operation. With limited cuts to fills aside from what you might need to excavate for footings. And then the piles obviously allow us to distribute that throughout the site. Uh, as I mentioned, kind of now that I can point to it, that's the existing tree line. That's our most proximate area, but that's still within the area that they were using as a gravel pit. And all of that surface area is being directed to one of these stormwater basins on this side of the property. And all the pipe network is kind of fanning out around the building and distributing water over there. We are going back out on Thursday to do a high intensity soil survey. That's the alteration of terrain. They have become the micro geo analysis. We don't expect anything different. We've been working with the geotechnical company um, for a long time to get an understanding of the materials like. Uh, we modeled it in terms of infiltration capacity as DES would have us do it, which is take the highest rate that the soil books would tell you you can use and cut it in half. So we're using three inches per hour for infiltration through here, which is half the rate that you'd customarily expect and what the DES policy would suggest these soils were capable of producing. What, what I wanted to see, obviously tonight, there's a lot of paper we, we filed with you, and we've been doing a lot of work with you uh, historically and a lot recently. We tried to take in some of the feedback we've been getting historically and incorporate into this application. I know that the Green Pro Snow is a big one, you know, straw instead of hay, or to the extent that we can, and particularly when you're more proximate to some of those sensitive areas, mulch stocks, because they're a little bit more resilient, they can, a little bit more of an erosion control capacity. And, and try to get your feedback from prior applications kind of into this. But what I'd love to do is make this a collaborative discussion. Any thoughts, questions, comments that you'd like, I'd be happy to answer anything. Through the, through the chair, I don't know if we can, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't okay. think to be so formal, but. All right, so that half circle next to the, uh, the wetland piece, right uh, that's the buffer? So, that, so what we did here is we did a 250 foot offset from which is the shore, that's the outer boundary of the shoreland as DES would define it and as your ordinance adopts. As a conservative approach, we took it from the stub of this. It's actually the mean high water mark of the pond. This stub is kind of like a little land bridge that goes over here. I think there's a culvert that extends out underneath that land bridge in here. For the purposes of this, when we established the buffer, I assumed it to be contiguous and established it even off of these kind of little isolated pockets that may have some kind of topographical connection, but aren't necessarily part of Bowers Pond. So this offset is from this stub of these two isolated areas. So that is the buffer? This is the outermost buffer. There's an interior buffer. I think it's 100 feet, I think is the interior one. 
So what's the regulation for developing inside the buffer? So the regulation is, it's, it's, it's called no degradation, essentially, is what it is. And there's a certain percentage that they allow to over the existing buffer. We couldn't simply just go in here and erase that entire buffer, right? Obviously. When the buffer is degraded, quote unquote, you're allowed to work inside that buffer, provided you don't exceed or further degrade it by a certain percentage, which is why we structured this application to keep it inside of the previously developed areas or disturbed areas, I guess you could call them. So there's no permits on record showing that they're allowed to dump gravel in the buffer? Well, this site has been in operation for so long. I'm not sure that before EPA regulations, the alteration of terrain, which was formerly called site specific, and also the shoreland protection ordinances were adopted or enforced. And since you're treating it as a woodland, from from a from a drainage perspective, we were asked to treat it as a pre-developed condition by DES as a, as a really conservative measure, and because historically, when they look at hydraulics, speaking just from a drainage perspective, they have to do a pre and post development comparison. They asked us to treat the pre as undisturbed. And I see that looks like it's a little more than halfway through the buffer towards the uh, water. Yeah, so at, 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 at its nearest point, that existing limited disturbance is approximately 90 feet. Why from. do you need the parking lot that close? Why can't you put it on the other end? When you're referring to the other end as being here? Yes. So this area here, it's hard to tell, but you kind of see that shadow line in there. This is that ledge face wall that's probably, I don't know, maybe 60, 80 feet tall. Are you doing any blasting there? No, the intent is we leave all of that ledge face alone. And we pulled everything interior of it, so we didn't have to do the blasting. We don't have to go and tangle with this. We're leaving it all alone. I mean, if there, if there was some nipping and tucking, what I, could, like, what I could look at, honestly, if it was of concern to the commission, maybe some of these leading edges, I could kind of shift this geometry and maybe push it up a little bit and kind of- It just looks too close like to uh, the water. I think what, what's not apparent on here, there's an elevation break in here. I bet you it's 25 to 30 feet in here too. The, this is the limit which they've been historically you know, pulling gravel out of the property and they stopped that wood line. And we stopped interior of their existing limited disturbance. And the plans in front of you, you can look at the grading in that area, you'll see that there's a fairly substantial topographic break in there as well. All right. If, so if I understand this, the way it's currently designed, you are not going past the boundaries that's already been disturbed. Yes, sir, that's correct. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That took a lot of took a lot of coordination with the architect because they were pushing the boundaries of, like, hey, what can we do here operationally? Bigger, you know, and we always just kind of said, hey, stop. This is your sandbox, and let's figure out what to do inside that sandbox. No pun intended, obviously, but. Could you speak a little about what you expect to be inside the building? So we don't know yet. So it's, it could be, it's, we're doing this project with our client. It's kind of a speculative warehouse slash distribution facility. It could be one single tenant, right? Where, so this is the loading where the trucks back up in here, provide product in here, stored obviously, like the warehouse would suggest, and then distributed. Alternatively, it could be multiple tenants who do similar things. We're not expecting manufacturing or anything like that. It's predominantly gonna be well, we're simplifying it, but shipping, receiving. Product comes in, product goes out, gets delivered, it gets sorted, and then out to people who order. Probably, I imagine there's a lot of online interest in online sales. We do not have a tenant. As this is a speculative product because the interest in this particular kind of development is uh, very, very warm right now in the real estate market. The building structure itself. The building structure itself. The interior side, there's no floor drains, there's no interior drainage at all, or anything other than bathrooms or such. But that's my understanding. Maybe in the fire pump room, we have that the floor drain that would right. go to the sanitary systems if we had any of that. Yeah, I yeah. mean, because you know, on Mike's question, one of our big concerns obviously is the storage of, of fluids and sure. liquids that are you know corrosive or, or, or you know dangerous to the ecosystem out there. So, mm -hmm. uh, that, that's the intent here is not like we're not doing a manufacturing facility, which might have you know, high yeah. volumes of some of those processing materials that yeah. might be required. This is more your conventional kind of distribution, so it's going to have a lot of dry goods, things like that. Um, but don't envision, and we're not, we haven't been told if there's going to be any, they anticipate any kind of those materials that you're talking about. If there were, I'm sure, and I'm almost certain, without 
having committed to memory that there are certain provisions in the Aqua Protection District that are prohibitive to that, or at a minimum, talk about how they're supposed to be handled and treated and all kinds of provisions for those kinds of things. Is there any truck wash or servicing facility there at all? No, there's not, not doing maintenance here. There's no clean you know, car wash or truck wash that goes through. It's simply you know, trucks in, product in, and then out. And they have truck storage. These are supposed to be for trailers, not 18 wheelers that are sitting there idling right. or parked, but those are just trailer parking spaces that don't have a vehicle attached to it. How many uh, trucks are going to drive through the buffer a day, do you think? I don't know the number of trucks right now. You're saying come through here like this? Yeah. So the idea, we put this driveway in here for emergency access. We've been working with Captain Manuel in the fire department. This driveway is to provide full circulation around the building. The truck route is intended to be, you come in here, the truck, you can see this sweep, right? So we put that sweep in there intentionally. That's the primary road. Vehicles come in here, they can loop in, into this spot if they have to, come in here and park in, their, in the trailer. This driveway in here is not intended to be for truck access, it's simply for emergency response. Your interaction in the buffer is gonna be, gonna be right, right there. I don't know the number of vehicles. How would like you think? vehicle traffic limited in that buffer. I mean, the, the <clears throat> teasing, if you don't mind, I tease that idea a little bit. So this, I'm, I'm trying to stay away from all the ledge because that's something we don't want to, you want to blast particularly all around here. I mean, may, maybe the idea for us to do is see if we can ship some of these spaces. I don't know if I can get it entirely out of the buffer and still meet operational expectations, but perhaps we try and see if we can accommodate something up in this corner up here that, that pulls that a bit further away. That seemed like a reasonable. Yes. Right, right now your sh right now your drainage sheet your sheet flow or any drainage in that parking lot is is going off to the left. So it's pretty much there's a it's it's funny that the scale in here this building is almost eight acres right so yeah it's huge huh? right so when you there's a bunch of catch basins and closed drainage network yep. so it's not all just straight sheet flow where it gets into the basins we're going through the drainage structures water quality and then into those respective. Well, I, I was basins. I'm referring to the parking lot itself. Like, parking lot's you know, collected parti in yeah, particu in particularly up in the in that buffer section. If you could look, just here. speak to speak to the you know the, the flow characteristics of the water. I can plan <clears> so <throat> we can even do one better. Kind of a lot of black and white lines in there, but we'll do the best we can. So see these kind of like little dimples in here. Mm -hmm. So that, and then we have a catch. So these are all catch basins. So so those are the inlets in the pavement, right? We have a catch basin right there. We have a catch basin there, and then kind of equidistant around that area. So just for context, we all know what we're looking at, right? Where that's the kind of finger right there that we're talking about. Yep. Yep. These catch basins are taking that stormwater directing it to this four bay which goes into the primary that big surface basin similarly these catch basins are collecting runoff here you can see them in those spots this half of the parking lot and these two structures here go to that that big basin they go to the sediment four bays and to the primary basin these two low spots go into this bigger system underground in the parking lot this is a series of chambers and these darker areas on the chambers are fabric line systems. So it takes kind of sediment. It's kind of like the, it's the underground version of the, the four bay. Access ports and that so we can clean to maintain. And then these have high flow like outlet controls that are controlling the hydraulics. This is done by, the, by way of that, that weir. This is done by way of a, like a manhole structure that has weirs and ultimately sends high flows or in larger storm events kind of down in that existing drainage condition. You know, Austin, everything coming off the roof is coming through pipes directly into the collection system. Yep, so this big manifold you can see in the bottom here, coming here, going into the big underground system. And a part of the rooftop is being this, this pipe that's right here. That pipe oh, is taking okay. parts of the roof and sending it into that upper basin as well. So we distributed it. It's not necessarily 50-50, but it's a distribution of it. 
Do you have the one, is that is that a pipe going off into the wetland, towards the wetlands? This right here? Yes. Yeah, so that, that's the pipe that controls the high level for this. Okay. And then, because you can see that slope in here, right? So right, it's significant. This, yeah, it's significant. This is down 82, 80, 78, 76, 74. It's down around like 172. The site itself is at, that's a 209, I think, right there. So yeah. 30 feet. I saw that you have the green snow crow, and that's mm -hmm. great. I, I must have missed where we you'll be storing the snow. Snow storage. So let me go back to kind of an overall okay. version of the plan. Um, so the idea, this area in here, mm -hmm. this dash line, that's a snow storage area. Okay. So that's a pretty large, when you look at it. Yeah. It doesn't look very big in the context of that, but it's a pretty large okay, area. That's great. We are, this whole perimeter really, functions in that capacity. We have a really, well, I shouldn't say really, but a reasonably healthy offset from this mm -hmm. wall to partially because we don't want, you know, rock ever flakes off. We, that whole perimeter serves as snow storage. These islands are pretty massive. Okay. That's snow storage. The idea is that we're not pushing it. Perfect. That okay. way. Excellent, thank you. Um, go ahead. Oh, it, if there is, if you do encounter a ledge on the east here, how is the water conveyed? Um, ledge on the east being like mm -hmm. like via that access road here. from the how, oh from here? Yeah, you say so you expect to find encounter ledge. We're there. thinking we're we haven't done so the geotech didn't didn't really probe this area extensively because it's an existing road and we changed the configuration a little bit. If we we planned to encounter it, if mm -hmm. we hit it, it's planned for. So this basin. I can go to the trade cross section of what it looks like if you want me to. But yeah, it's, yeah let me see if I can find the cross section from there. Is it in? It's way in the back. I know it's a big set, but it's 403. Uh, it's oh. probably deep. It's probably like in the seven series or something. Uh, let's see. Maybe in, actually in the nine. Let's see. There we go. Yeah, this is the right here. Okay. It's much bigger in high definition too. So this is that particular bit. It's a generic cross section, but to convey an idea, right? So there's the floor of the base and it's it's vegetated. It'll have it'll have grass or you know, vegetation on it. This layer underneath is this is now this is an NHDES specific section. So 18 inches, you can see soil media with a very specific combination. It's 50% sand, 20% loamy topsoil, 30% composted woody fibers, and fine shredded bark mulch. The idea is that it still has a certain level of permeability, but it's throttled. The important thing with the filter system is contact time. You want water in contact because the, that material strips out the things it's supposed to strip out. Contact time is important. You don't want it so slow that it's not doing anything, but this kind of composition is what the ES goes to. Underneath that is a section of four inch under drain that we have in a grid. And then it's, in a, it's a kind of like your, your conventional French drain. It's got crushed stone around it. This is, this is the, the engine, if you will, of the treatment system. Water slowly works its way through that filter course down into the gravel. The under drains then collect it, take it out. You have a controlled release of their outlet control structure. And then that slowly wicks and goes back on its natural drainage of course. If we find ledge, this is what we're going to employ because it keeps us high. It, it accomplishes the same idea of an infiltration system where you get a lot of soil contact time, water going through the soil. The difference is water is not going to infiltrate, but it still gets you the benefit of the treatment. And where this isn't in the direct topographic influence of the pond, it goes to the left, if you will. We still get that treatment benefit, the detention benefit, the recharge if we find rock. If not, I'll convert this over to a regular basin. Sure. But this serves the same purpose. We've done this quite a bit. We most recently did it out in Claremont where we just found it was all rock. Every single basin we did, if it was an underground system with chambers or a surface basin, had this section in it. Spent a lot of time creating this with the folks over at DES and their alteration and terrain program. So we basically mimicked all of that work before to, with this particular, that particular section. 
So thank you for explaining that. Yeah, no um, very unique feature of this plan. Now for the other map, can you go back to uh, I'm going to the drainage plan? You see where the the buffer is, where the the parking lot meets the uh, right here? the edge. Like, no, not that. Like, all right, the map you just had with the lines. Map, it is the grading plan. Uh, the one before that. Yeah, I can go. Want me to go back to this the design plan? <laughs> Oh, I really zoomed into that. Yeah. Uh, let's see, I'm on Util, almost there. This one, right? Yep. Okay. Zoom in there. Uh, now, what kind of fence is uh, between the edge, like on the edge right there, Being where it here. drops off? Being here. Like. You see where the, the parking lot is? Yeah, you're talking about like, here. Sir. Yeah. What kind of fence is right there between that and the, uh, oh, the drop-off? There's no off? fence in there currently. We have the guide rail. Can there be some sort of fence to catch any uh, litter? Sure. Yeah. You want? We could put a fence. Like a chain link or something. Like, like along just, this edge here just to prevent. Just for when it blows, yeah. it doesn't blow down. I was going to grab my notepad because I forgot a pen. I'm just going to write the pen. So just put the fence essentially like that the whole length inter, yeah, the interface between us and the, that slope in the property. It's kind of like to catch stuff when it's sure. windy. Yeah. Is that, isn't there the 25 or 20 foot? I mean, doesn't it go up like 20, 25 feet? Down. It goes down, down 20, down. 25 yeah. feet. Yeah, yeah this, this, that's this, a cliff diving space. This, this right is there. all low. And actually, okay. so this, this slope in here, you see that really, those really tight contours in there? Yeah. That's the historical limit of disturbance. So this edge right here, all of that work historically has been where they did all the gravel operation. When they were cutting some of this out, they were filling it in here or vice versa. Yeah. They cleared all the vegetation outside of that limit of limit of disturbance. Okay. That's where you see this these very, very tightly bunched contours are their hist historical fill and earthwork limits. All right. So what are we talking about? Like a six foot fence, eight foot fence? What are we talking about? Just something that's not a guardrail to that's fine. You, yeah, you know if a right piece of the guide rail. Yeah. You know if paper and cardboard fly chain link fence catches it. All right. Um so what would that be described as far as a location? So I can show them the plan. Okay. Let's go back to the overall for a second. I just, what I'm envisioning, this is me inferring it up. I, I take it from that rounding point right there, run yeah. down this entire perimeter and wrap it around that corner there. All right, so what is, what what's? That's the south end of the property. South end. Yeah, okay. yeah north, north, just, we're going by the compass, north is on the left. This is, and to think of the way I keep thinking, of, this is Effie Everett. That's the northbound side on the upper side. Okay. Do you make note in in here about the filling for the silt socks? Do we make about the types of filling in the silt socks? In terms of the material that's in yes. there? Yes. So with the detail in the plans, it's, I think it's a seven series of those. Okay. It talks about exactly what's in the composition of that mulch sock. Because right. yeah, we, we want to obviously make sure that, you know, at the end of the job when you slit them open, that there's no invasives or like That's bamboo? Right. Yeah. 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 No, we don't film with bamboo. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you're right. You're right. The, the mulch sock and the what's in there and compositions on that. Okay. Right. Yeah. Anyone else? So the only thing that I show is the fence. Do you mm -hmm. see anything else? Mm -mm. Talk about this one with the fence being what we just discussed here. Just what we discussed. And if there was an opportunity, I heard too, is if there was an opportunity for us, even if it was. Yeah. somewhat to try and pull this out a little bit to the extent that we can, right? Any further separation is we'll try to achieve. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah, do you want to that in a letter? It, we can't require them to use that as the emergency route, right? I mean, you don't know who's going to be in there. You could say we'd like you to use this as an emergency route, but they can use that if they 
think it's better. They, they could. Ideally. We, we set it up where, I mean, it comes through this whole, we narrowed this driveway down in the front. Oh, okay. So it, it, it does, you know, Captain Manuel and his team, this will satisfy their need for the burnt, the ladder truck, the pumper truck that gets the, the feet out, if it has to land. Yeah. Meets the fire department, fire truck swings. Mm -hmm. um, we intentionally made it a bit narrower and less conducive. We made this intersection head in. So this is clearly like just intuitively, this flow pattern is around the site. And it's gonna have signs that say, wayfinding signs, deliveries, trucks. Mm -hmm. okay. It's not to say somebody can't do it. People do yeah. dumb things when they drive, but. Um, <laughs> it's, it's enticing, that's, yeah, that's it's good. It's <laughs> set up to be very challenging for them to do it and you have to work to do it, okay. so. Good, thank you. Thank you for your good explanations and patience. Yes, yes. No, you're very welcome. Excellent, I'm happy, excellent I'm happy job. To do it. And we appreciate you looking at all the Merrimack <laughs> requirements because you, you got all of them. So that's excellent. Thank you. Thank you. So you so notes over here. Do you happen to have the summary of the drainage report? Just the summary page? Uh, yeah. I can. The, you mean the, the conclusions page? Or yeah, what, yeah page? Just, the, just, the final, just the final flows. I can, I can rip it out for that. I think no. I have them back there. Say that might be in there, report. Yeah, there you go. So it's probably in the narrative, my guess, over at the front. Yeah. Usually there's a kind of a one page. Right there. Like I mentioned at the beginning, there's one, it's a POA2 where we have a slight increase in the 50. And so yeah, because of that driveway that's been there forever. You'll see in the POA2, we have a couple double asterisks next to it. Mm -hmm. All right, so you're going to the planning board tomorrow night. Tomorrow evening, yeah. All right, so, yeah. so they'll hear from us, you know, yeah. as far as yeah. the only That's thing that I can think of is the fence. Okay. So, great. Okay. So you can turn that around tomorrow. I wasn't expecting, I'm not saying I yeah. walked in here tonight expecting you to send a letter to the planning board tomorrow. Oh, no, we will. No, we'll we will. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, that'll be there. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you very much. This is very thorough. I mean, yeah. really. Yeah, you did an excellent job. Thank you very much. I appreciate it's that. All the questions we would have asked. Yeah. Good. I appreciate that very much. Thank you. You're welcome. So, no, we not make any motions. Send the letter. We're just, we're just good to go. Yep. What's all right. Name? Good to go. Thank you. Yeah, we just, we're advisory only. So, well, we just. I remember when uh, a number of. <laughs> Uh, what did you do, folks? I just wanted to make sure that I had everything that you guys needed to see so you could do. Yep, you did good. Great. Excellent. Thank you, Austin. Have a good night. You too. I'm going to go power down the magic machine here. Okay. <laughs> we'll continue on. Um, and we knew that this project went before the planning board uh, yes. next week. That's yep. probably the reason we didn't postpone this meeting. Uh, we just tomorrow. Didn't want... Or it's, to... it's tomorrow. It's to next week. Oh, yeah, tomorrow, it's tomorrow yeah. night. Yeah. We, we, need, we knew we couldn't wait until our next scheduled meeting, so. Yeah. New business items? Don't have any on the agenda? I sent, I just sent something out late. I don't know if anyone saw the email right before the meeting. Yes, G. Perry. Yeah, you see that? <laughs> yeah. About what? So we get, we, we have, uh, I don't know it's not really new business, but we had a complaint uh, regarding our a an informational email regarding uh, someone trying to build trails over in the uh, Fields Farm. Uh, Fields Farm, yeah, um, the Fields Farm property. So I forwarded that to Tim Thompson, okay, asking if he's going to need if he needs us to go over there and take some pictures or something like that. So we should do a, a walk there. <laughs> we can. We're uh, we're. Once that property uh, in the, gets conveyed to us, or how that's going to work, I don't know. That, I guess Tim's still looking into that for us. Um, it's not our turn. I don't believe so. I think there wasn't there some hiccup on the uh, on the the transfer. On the transfer, there we, we were waiting for that transfer to take place, and then we were going to start the Fields Farm subcommittee. There's so we're in kind of in limbo, I guess. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we can go walk that property in time. Mm -hmm. It doesn't lend itself to good parking right now, so no. you have to kind of mm -hmm. park it himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. We'll all go park it. There are no motorized vehicles allowed on it on Fields Farm. So yeah, 
Yes. So ideally, if the homeowner is watching right now, they should cease and desist. <laughs> but you probably aren't watching. So. <laughs> the chance of that is pretty slim. Yeah, I know. <laughs> if you have any signs or you think anyone has any signs, let me know and I would be happy to pick those up. Yeah. Mm, good idea. What? No motorized signs? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Do you have any? I have one. I better, I better hang on to that one, though. Yeah. <laughs> Good night. Thank you. Good night. Yeah. Thank you again. Thank you. Good night. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what there is left for no more signs. I have to go through that massive amount of stuff that Matt left me. <laughs> no, old business. We really left something. Someone wanted to take something off the table from a previous meeting. I don't don't think we have anything there. Uh, other business, were there any uh, subcommittee updates that anyone since our last meeting? It hasn't been that long since our last meeting. Uh, I think I, I think we've had one, the Greater Woods. I don't think I talked about it. You had a yeah. meeting? You weren't here. Yeah, I wasn't here last, the last meeting. Sorry about that. That was kind of you had a Greater un, Woods meeting? Un, un, unprecedented. So, but yeah, we had, we, did have, we had one meeting. So uh, we have two. The two new members, and I, I don't have their names, uh, that we voted in. Paul and however, however long yeah, ago. Paul and uh, somebody. Uh, yeah. yeah one. Um, so we're going to take on, try to take on the uh, Greater Woods subcommittee, uh, Greater Woods uh, forestry plan, and get that get that finalized and get that back up to this commission. So that's our that's our focus. Wonderful. Anyone else? Yeah. Are there any upcoming upcoming subcommittee meetings that you would like me to add to the calendar? Squire is going to meet in September. We're, I don't know. You don't know? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we, were, we were supposed to meet uh, two weeks ago or something when, when this meeting was taking place. It was just to uh, touch base. Yeah. But there's not much going on. Uh, they moved more of the rocks. Some of the rocks that weren't moved before. Down you know, by the like water? As, or? You're, as you're driving down, like, you know, some of the smaller roads inward. I can open back up. Yeah, they moved all the rocks. I'm telling you, we should just drop some trees. Well, we have, well, we have to, we'd have to move the trees. Those pine trees. Drop them. The pine trees from... The eagles? Yeah, the ones that they want to drop. Yeah, but that's on the other side of the... No, no. Okay. I'm just, I thought they were on the river side. Mm -hmm. Oh. Well, they're on the north side of the, of the I, road. I, yeah, I thought they were they were in line with the runway. Yeah. Huh. That, so they're going but back. We don't, we don't know. Back along the, <laughs> they, they never <laughs> showed us the trees they wanted to take down. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well... Yeah, they they, yeah, those was the was the was the you know because if you if you when you when you drive down there the planes take off and land like over your like over your head, so as you walk along the trail along the train tracks, on the other side of the driveway that's the section they want to take some of the trees down there so they could have the planes coming in a little, they have to kind of do this right now. Some of the stuff they're flying over there is actually pretty big. It's pretty impressive. And they, they need some, they need runway space to get these things off and, yeah. and back on the ground, so. I think, well, yeah, I think whatever trees if we, we have to get the moved. town to do it and cut off whatever lands on the road. Just move it off to the side. I don't think the average person has a chainsaw that can well, cut it, through. They have them. wenches, chainsaws, and well, yeah. those are Pretty big trees. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anything else on I subcommittees? Talk about that. <laughs> yep. All right. Presentation of the minutes. I will make a motion to approve the Merrimack Conservation Commission meeting minutes dated August 2nd, 2021, with changes as follows. Second. By Cindy. Motion by Gina, second by Cindy. Uh, anyone want to go first? You? 
And I shall go first. All right. On. Like, it's a trick question. It is a trick question, but you know, I just like to offer because I don't want to be the go, spelling police all the time. We like it. <laughs> okay. I don't have very much. The only thing that I have is on page two. And Don can just do kind of a, um, a search and replace. Um, on line 26, page two, leech should be L-E-A-C-H. And then there's several places where there's leeching. So um, those should all be fixed. It's L-E-A-C-H is when you're pulling something out of, kind of like percolating a base in there. And the only other thing is on page two, line 45, um, it bales is B-A-L-E-S. And on page three, line 14, a useful tool, T-O-O-L. So um, say the last one again? Tool, T-O-O-L. Oh, it's useful, a useful tool. Okay. Yeah. And that's all I had. Anyone else? All right. Uh, vote to approve the minutes. All in favor, say aye. Motion carries seven Number or six abstain. to zero, and Gage abstained. All right, I don't see any members of the public here for public comments, so we'll uh, we'll go next to commissioner comments. Colin, you want to go first? Tonight, thank you. Nothing. Gage? Um, we still owe Matt Karen a lot of thanks because he's, uh, he's still receiving personal emails regarding down trees in our woods, and he's uh, taking it upon himself to do some work, so. He's awesome. If, if, you, uh, if you see Matt, just actually give him another thank you. And he's doing well, actually. I just talked to him last night, so. Your pass. Mike? Does the town have any festivals? I know Hudson just had Old Home Day. I'm asking because uh, when I was on their conservation commission, we uh, started to have a booth there to uh, kind of show off what we do. Pretty popular. Mm -hmm. In case we, we have the, the spring, th winter, carnival. Winter, winter, carnival. winter carnival. Winter carnival. We didn't really have a winter carnival last last year for, for a long time that's something we've set up a booth for in the past yep um, is there anything else like that well uh, fourth of july but fourth we don't july, you know, we don't Midway. we don't but even that's really seemed not it wasn't really well attended this year either yeah mm. parks and rec have some things that they ask if anyone wants to set up a table but we have not taken them up on that mm -hmm. except for the winter carnival just mm. the winter carnival just the winter carnival mm -hmm. but but that gets, I mean, aside from COVID, it usually gets pretty good attendance. Mm -hmm. And they, mm -hmm. they put us in good spots. Yep. Yes, they mm -hmm. years, so mm -hmm. we, get, we actually get a lot of people to come up and talk to us, so. Yep. I oh. think you're signed up for the next one. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Mike, anything? Is our next meeting in mid-September? September 20th. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so probably not, I'm gonna miss that meeting. I'll leave. You didn't give you enough notice? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My son's getting married. Oh, congratulations. congratulations. Where? He was supposed to get married last year in Oregon. Oh, okay. So you're... Yeah, by Mount Hood. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. <laughs> the only thing that I was going to say is there were a couple of um, hikers who got lost up on Pacman Adnock, and it got me thinking because I was reading um, their fishing game. I didn't even realize this fishing game sells a card. It's twenty five dollars for an individual or thirty five dollars for a family, and it it's kind of a get out of jail free card because if you get lost, hike safe. yes, hike safe. Mm -hmm. So I would suggest that people. I'm actually going to get one for my niece because she comes up and hikes at the White Mountains. Um, this is all it is. Yep. <laughs> So I think that everybody should um, 
support fish and game and get this 25 or 35 for your family card. And then if you do get lost, and they do need to rescue you. Don't get charged big bucks. So that's you don't get charged as long as you're not malicious. If you're stupid, you're you're off the hook. But right. uh, that's but co- otherwise that's they won't correct. Do. If you're not prepared, yeah. or you do something stupid, they yeah. charge you. If it's just like an accident, yeah. you don't get charged. But I, right? I I agree, Gina. I think it's a terrific program, mm-hmm. and it does go straight to fish and game rescue. So, yeah. who's running the website? It's, it's, just, on, it's, it's a, a page on fishing. No, no, no. I mean, yeah. we can, our website, we can put a link. You can do the hike safe and put yeah. a link right mm-hmm. to it. Okay. The application. Okay. Well, I can, I think Tim's still working on the website, so I can ask Tim if he'll put you, the link Are you there. working on it with Tim? That's my husband's and my gift to each other on New Year's Day. Oh, how nice. <laughs> He's like, have you gotten it yet? Oops. <laughs> Wait, can't you just get the family one? Or yeah, yeah. The, okay. Just one of us has to nag the other to actually do it. Get, to actually do it. <laughs> Okay. I just I never I never heard of it before. I just thought it was a terrific. It's only conference. a couple of years old. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, but anyway, so yeah, that'll be a a, a well spent twenty five or thirty five dollars for you. That's all I have. Cindy, uh, no, I don't have anything. You? No. Mm-hmm. Nothing for me. Nothing. I had nothing either. September twentieth is our next meeting. Mm-hmm. Um, someone want to make a final motion? Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion by Gabe. Second by Ellen. All in favor? Motion carries seven to zero. Zero. Well, this meeting is adjourned. It's uh, seven twenty-two. Thank you.